you ask for it, it seems like there is a distinct camp, two camps of people when it comes to anybody's first reaction with my Humvee. Camp one is, wow, this thing is amazing. I love it. Where did you get one? How can I get one? Blah, 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 blah. And camp two is, I hate this piece. I had to drive these things. They're terrible. They're piece. I hate everything about them. I would much rather have a Jeep Wrangler. So this is for really that second camp of people and maybe to educate that first camp of people um, who may be a little, little optimistic about what it's like owning a Humvee. All right, we're gonna start with some softballs, softball, um, you know, reasons, softball things I don't like about this vehicle. But first, special thanks to LTI Delivers. They actually delivered my Humvee. We're hopefully gonna be working together in future videos. They've sent me some cool stuff. Thank you guys, shout out for uh, supporting the channel. So, these things should not steer you away from getting a Humvee, but they are annoying. I have to bring them up. They're kind of like honorable mentions of things I hate about my Humvee. Um, first and foremost, parts availability. Not really very good. You have about two main companies I can think of. One is Midwest Military Group, which I do really like, and they are really close to where I live. They're great. And the other one is Predator, and there's probably a few more that I just haven't really researched. Predator is out of Florida. Midwest Military Group is out of Washington, Missouri. Not ragging on Midwest Military Group. They've done a fantastic job. They've been very good to me, but they are expensive. And that's because most of this stuff is custom made. It's powder coated. It's really nice stuff like my bumper here. I'm bad at camera angles and my heavy duty rock sliders, which are very dirty right now. And also my rear bumper and some other things they've sent me. Good stuff, but it's expensive. If you had a Jeep Wrangler, for instance, a two-door or something like that, you could get a cheap bumper for probably 500 bucks. You could get cheap sliders for probably 200, 300 bucks. So, you know, don't plan on customizing your Humvee unless you A, know how to fabricate, or B, are willing to spend the money. It just costs money. Actual repair parts, you know, not that bad. Um, not much worse than any civilian vehicle or better. For instance, I just got a new speedometer gauge. I think it was 100 bucks. You know, maybe you could get that cheaper on the aftermarket, civilian market for Jeeps and stuff like that. But if you wanted to get a OEM one, it would be ridiculously expensive, I'm sure. Or you'd have to get a whole dash. I don't know. So that's kind of a little nagging thing. Not a big deal, but keep it in mind. The second thing is there's no real security when it comes to these vehicles, okay? I do have hard doors on mine. They're after, aftermarket from Cobra Tech. I highly recommend them. They're great to work with. Uh, you can go around, lock all four, and you can also kind of lock the windows the way an RV glass would lock. Probably not that hard to break in. Um, I also added a key switch. Most of them just have a literal switch to start the engine. So, I mean, if you don't do that, you're basically asking to get it stolen. But even the key switch, I think, is probably really easy to hotwire. It's a soft top just like any other soft top you could break in. On Humvees, however, the bottom part of the soft top, I don't think really attaches to anything unless mine's weird or something. So you can just go lift it up, come in without even cutting it with a knife. So not really any security. They're probably pretty easy to steal. I'd feel very nervous leaving this thing in a bad area, for instance, if I was traveling across the country or something like that. All right. We mentioned two, I'm going to get into three hardball things that I do not like about my Humvee. These things are really something you need to 100% consider um, before you buy one of these because it might be a deal killer for you. Number one, sorry, number, we're going from lowest to high, yeah. Number three, it does leak. It leaks water when it rains. I'm getting splashed. I'm getting splashed, folks. I'm getting splashed. Oh, we got, we got, 
We got water coming in the bed. Oh man, look at that. And you can't really control that. Oh my god. goodness it's pretty annoying but when you're driving you're if you're wearing jeans and it's raining you're gonna get out with wet jeans or wet shoes or what whatever it is i've tried my best to seal it up i've sealed up the windshield i've sealed up other parts it still leaks if nothing else even when you run through a, pe- a big puddle water can come up through the floor i shouldn't say a puddle but like a mud hole um, they're not airtight they were never designed to be airtight virtually you have to seal up every little crack and cranny and hope that your silicone holds or else you or your passengers are going to be getting wet. Your stuff might be getting wet. There isn't even a real a rear seal on most of them when you get them. So water will just flowly free free freely flow from the truck bed into the Humvee. You can buy a seal, um, but they're pretty expensive. I think like 300 bucks or something like that. So they do leak. To me, that's not a big enough of a deal killer, but this might be for you. Number two, the power is ridiculously, criminally low. The 6.5 liter that I have only makes about 100 horsepower and less than 400 foot-pounds of torque. You can dial them up a little bit, but it won't help that much. There's also a turbo version, um, but that costs money. And even worse, there is a version that is a 6.2 liter and only has a three-speed. I at least have a three-speed with overdrive. That version, I wouldn't recommend anyone get in a million years because you're only going to be doing 55 on the highway on a good day and it's going to be wrapping to kingdom come on the tachometer. Mine at least will do like 75, but if you're in the mountains or something like that, just forget about it. You're going to get maybe 65 to 70 miles an hour, which I experienced this weekend. Video to come on that trip soon. All right. Now, this, I think, is going to be the biggest deal killer reason for getting a Humvee for most of you people, especially you, uh, those of you who are family people or want to overland in it. They are incredibly loud inside. And from what I've experimented with what i've heard there isn't much you can do to lower the noise it's not exhaust noise it's not tire noise it's almost all engine noise and drivetrain noise there's a lot of moving parts they make a lot of noise they don't have very good insulation you can try insulating them but then you're going to be fighting with other problems like everything getting wet including your insulation you know you can try spray on insulation i've heard that's maybe like 10 to 20 percent quieter But nothing really is going to make it into a civilian Jeep. Um, It's going to be loud regardless of what you do. It's so loud, in fact, that when you go on a trip on a highway that's any bit of length, uh, I would highly advise you bring earplugs or headphones or even ear uh, muffs to keep the noise down because you might uh, might damage your, your eardrums. It's incredible. The noise, and it's not a pleasant noise. It's not like a low drone. It's like a very high-pitched, whiny, very loud noise. It sounds great off-road when you're going 20 miles an hour, but when you're going 70 on the highway, it's almost unbearable. It is so loud you can barely talk to the person directly next to you in the passenger seat. So I hope this video helped you. I hope it unveiled some things you may have been wondering about owning one of these. If any of these things was going to be a major problem, I hope I saved you a bunch of money and a bunch of time because they do cost money and they take an unbelievable amount of time to get them from Gulf Planet if you were going to go that route. Um, all in all, do I regret my purchase? No, not at all. I would do it again in a heartbeat. Even if it costed more money and was less comfortable, I would definitely buy another one. I love driving this thing. It's incredible off-road. Nothing really uh, performs in the same way it does. You know, I think there's stuff that is good in its own way, like Jeeps with solid axles that have a lot of flex. But this thing is basically a freaking tank. It's got a completely flat underside, nothing really to get hit. It hikes a wheel eight feet up in the air. It's entertaining to watch, entertaining to drive. 
And, and honestly, it's quite capable on these tires I've put on it. Um, I really can go, I, I think I'm comparable to a, like a Jeep, um, Wrangler of any kind with like a four inch lift running, you know, 35s, something like that. Um, with, you know, basically all stock, everything, stock tire sizes, stock height, all that. So my SD card is about to fill up. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Once again, shout out to LTI delivers. I will see you in the next one, which is going to be a good one overlanding through Arkansas. All right. Thanks guys. See ya.